Hello Wisdom and Wellness family, welcome to a new episode. In fact, the last episode in the month of July. It has been an amazing month. Um, so many incredible things have happened and you know, in my hearts of hearts, I'm genuinely grateful. And if this is how we're starting the second half of the year, then look, I am here for it. Uh, firstly, thank you to all of you. We have reached 1 million downloads on podcasts, not on YouTube or anything else, but just on audio podcasts. That for me is a milestone and a half, knowing that podcasts are fairly new in the South African market. And like when we started, I've mentioned this, a lot of people didn't even know what podcasts are. And to have come to a point where we've reached a million downloads, that is a milestone I didn't even know to think of. But when my husband sent me that we're there, I just got excited. And also, literally, from in about a month's time, we've got our best-selling course, Speak Life September. You guys are out here in my DMs, in my emails, asking, Pumi, when can we find out how much is the price? All I have to say is that you have to join our mail list so that you can know as soon as it launches. Best believe me, it is going to sell out. It sells out every year, not because of anything else, but the testimonies and how much it changes so many people's lives, including mine. And so I'm excited for that. Um, if you don't know how to join our mail list, you can just click on the link in the bio on our pod, on our page. And I'll also drop the link here. And I have something called my Sunday Nuggets every Sunday where it feels, I keep saying this and I'm going to keep saying it, it feels like after a long day coming from church, sitting on your couch or your fat sack like me, having a cup of coffee and just getting on the phone with a friend, talking about what happened this week, uh, what did you get done, uh, this is what I learned, this is what I'm taking into the new week. So it's literally that. And every week it's different. Sometimes I'll let you know what's my favorite perfume and link it. I'll share what my dietitian thought or even share um, from my speaking engagement. So it's different every week. I am totally enjoying the writing. I'm enjoying how personal I can get and how safe the space is. I mean, I used to share a lot on social media and on Instagram, but you just kind of learn that certain platforms aren't as welcoming for certain things. So I think I'm, I love being a vulnerable person. I think vulnerability does something for all of us. And I just had to find the right platform. And right now our emails are exactly that. So yeah, you'll know when we launch um, Speak Life September, when it goes on sale. Um, yes, we are covering um, na our neighboring countries. So yes, you can be a part of that. And like I said, our email list is completely free and open to absolutely anyone. So in today's podcast, um, oh yeah, and I must mention that for people who are finding out, well, why should I join Speak Life September? Who is Speak Life September for? Um, and for me, it's very, very personal. That's why I do it every year. But if you feel like you need to, to advance to the next level in your growth, it's very important to know that growth never stops. The day we stop growing is the day we start dying. So in Speak Life September, we look at our growth in a unique way and how it relates to you. And we work on systems that help us to get to the next level in our growth. And all of us are in different spaces. So your growth might not look like mine or it might not look like the next person, but it's important to acknowledge that as a person, you need to grow. And also the habits, daily habits and routines. Um, that is one thing I have consistently studied and I enjoy um, researching about and teaching and sharing with other people. I have consistently worked on my habits. They don't look the same in every season. And I enjoy that. So we really focus on changing um, our daily habits and routines. And lastly, consistency. I speak a lot about consistency simply because it is the most common questions I, question I get. And for me, it's important to talk about things that people are struggling with, um, solve a need that is actually there. So I wrote in my nuggets um, last week that it's not that we're inconsistent. We're all consistent in something. It's just that some people are consistent in what leads leads to their growth and their success. And some people are consistent in time killers. So some might argue you're consistently on your phone as soon as you wake up in the morning. That is consistency. Is it yielding good results? We don't know. Or you're consistently reading books that are good for you. That is consistent, consistent but it's probably consistent that is good for you. So those are some of the things you can expect. Um, this year is the healing edition based on, based on my own personal journey with healing. And like I said, I am all for vulnerability. I share it all, but it's important to choose where um, you are vulnerable. 
so this week we are doing a little Q and A. Um, I don't, I haven't I asked you guys to send some questions on Instagram, and I will be answering them here. I can't answer all of them because it's quite a lot, but I'll answer the ones that come up um, uh, quite often and are very similar. And yeah, let's go for it. So this one to give context, I had mentioned that we, when we started the podcast, our laptop got stolen the day after and I wanted to quit. It felt like maybe this is a sign I shouldn't be doing this, but we didn't quit. We started over and we continued. So this question is, you put in the work, invested so much and your laptop was stolen. Please go deep. How do you feel then? How did you feel then and now? Um, like I mentioned, it felt like wow, am I even supposed to be doing this? I felt very discouraged. I felt like maybe let me just continue with what I'm doing. We've wasted money. We've wasted time. I've wasted other people's time as well. What now? And I think for that day, we sulked, we mourned. Um, and then the next day or two, we decided, you know what, actually, um, perhaps the reason why I'm getting so many distractions is that this thing is important. So we're going to start where we were. And we also didn't go high, high end like we had started out. We started with what we had and we continued. I, it was really heartbreaking at the time. Um, it, felt, it felt unfair. But right now I look back and I realize that maybe some of those conversations weren't meant to be there. Um, also, I was, we learned how to file our work better, like we created systems uh, because everything was kind of random. So it's taught us how to respect the business and how we store things in our business. So there was a lot of lessons um, that I took from there. I know this is broad, but how different is it from YouTube? What basic equipment does one need on podcasts? So YouTube and podcasts is very different platforms. But it's also up to you. I think you kind of get to choose the platform and how you use it. But podcast is more relaxed and more conversational. Um, it's You need to think of podcasts as people sitting in their cars and what do they want to listen to, right? And so what's important with podcasting is your sound. That is the number one important thing when it comes to your podcast is do I have good sound? With YouTube, it's understanding your niche, understanding who you're talking to, and also it's very visual. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to to be aesthetically pleasing, but it shouldn't bother the eye. We always say when we're upgrading our equipment, it's not that people can notice and say, ah, you got new this, but it's so that the, 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 the quality is so good that no one has to fuss about it. They can actually focus on the content. To date, what book besides the Bible has impacted you the most and transformed your life? Sure, so many books have impacted my life and transformed my life in different ways. But currently in this season, it's Disruptive Thinking by T.D. Jakes. We recently reviewed it um, on our memberships. By the way, for those asking on membership, there's a join button um, on YouTube where you can click. Um, there's two packages. The 149 Rand package gives you access to full um, podcast videos as well as the live reviews of books we have every month. Um, so it's Disruptive Thinking by T.D. Jakes. That for me opened up a whole new world. Um, it made me understand myself as a disruptor and understand the people around me and the roles they play. And then secondly, who moved my cheese? Very simple, simple books worth very practical advice. If you're not a reader, I recommend you start with this. It would start with it. It took me about two hours. I was in a flight. I finished it in a two-hour flight and my mind was blown. And it's one of those books I know I'm going to continue to make reference to. Someone said, Sunday nuggets. for as long as you find them relevant, please keep sharing. Thank you so much. I am, like I said, I'm enjoying sharing the nuggets. Um, it's very, very personal and it's not forced. And I really believe it's what, it's the, it's where God wants me to, 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 to to be right now, one of the things God wants me to participate in. And yeah, you know, I've just become so open. It seems like a small thing, but I know that's how God moves. Like sometimes it's the things that we think are irrelevant or what good does it do or who's going to read a blog. But it's like you give allowance and give space for God to do what he needs to do. How do you balance God with university whilst having bad habits, i.e. smoking? Well, I would like to think if you know something is a bad habit, 
I think your goal shouldn't necessarily be to balance your bad habits and God and university. The goal should be how do I swap this bad habit for a good habit? Because the thing is, with habits, you can't just kick off a habit and just go on with your life. Every habit has to be replaced with something else. So let's say you have a habit of smoking. Um, replace it with a better habit. Instead, every if, every time you crave to smoke, perhaps go for a walk. Um, I'm obviously not a smoker and I don't understand how in depth it is, but you have to find a way to replace your bad habit with a good habit. I can't give you advice and say balance your habits, um, but it's important to know that as a you know, in university, it feels like you've got so many options and you're young and you can do whatever and your parents are not there. But I literally look at university as your, your seed, like you're planting the seeds that you're going to reap in your 20s and your 30s. And based on what you're doing in your teens and your 20s you and your early 20s, you're either going to spend your mid-20s recovering, fixing, and your 30s fixing, or you're going to be reaping good rewards. So when you look at those people who are putting in the work, who have a job and are doing all these things where you feel like it's boring, best believe their 20s and their 30s are going to be better because they won't be fixing stuff and recovering from stuff and healing from stuff that, the, that could have been avoided, but they will be enjoying the fruits of their labor. So yeah, I know it's tempting. There's a lot of things thrown at us in university, but you don't lose anything by choosing God and choosing good habits. What is growth to you? How do you define it? What is growth? to me yo that's such a a packed packed question but for me I think growth I always look at nature so we had this peach tree when we arrived here and the first year um, we had some good peaches and it was really really great and I think the family before knew how to take care of the tree and the year before they had pruned it and did all the stuff and in the second year um, our peaches were most of them more rotten and they were falling by the pool and they weren't growing well. And so I told my dad, I'm like, mm, I don't think this tree is happy. Like the peaches aren't as good as last year. They're not growing as big. And my dad said, well, you need to prune it. You need to cut it and let it grow um, again. And so we did that. And I can already see in the way that the tree is growing that the fruits it's going to produce are going to be better than the previous year when we didn't prune it. So the reason why it grew so well in the first year is because the family knew how to take care of it, what the tree needed. We just thought, let nature do its thing. And so all this to say that for me, growth comes with being in the right environment, being fed the right stuff. Being fed the right stuff can come from the people you talk to, the conversations you have, the things that you watch, the things that you surround yourself with, and then being allowed to be pruned. We think that once you start growing, like you just need to get, 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 get. But there's seasons um, every winter or every um, autumn, there's times where the tree has to be pruned so that it can grow in the right shape. And so we need to allow ourselves, we need to allow God to do that with our lives. It's like there's certain characteristics or habits or things that we still have in our heart that God needs to prune and say, okay, now that you're old enough, let's take this part away. Let's take these people away. Let's move you from this environment. And we hold on to that thinking, this is the only way forward but growth also comes with cutting down for you to grow in the right direction there's people who are getting older there's 60 year olds 70 year olds who are older in maybe gray hair and in age and in body but in terms of wisdom they've stayed the same and then there's people who are young and are allowing the progress of life allowing God to prune them allowing to be in the right environments who are wiser than a person who's just stuck in their ways forever so all this to say growth for me is is while ensuring that I'm in the right environment um also allowing God to do what he needs to do and our growth doesn't look the same um but we allow pruning you're in the right environment and also we can't be I think in life, you're genuinely always going to have struggles. But if you're struggling with the same thing every single year, then you're not growing. You're just staying in the same place. They always say you always get the same test in different ways until you pass it. So if you keep being tested with the same type of boyfriend, for example, who does the same thing, maybe you're just not learning the lesson. You're just changing people.
How do you do it? How do you keep your head high despite challenges and other circumstances? I think for me, it's important to know what I'm working towards. I believe highly in vision, um, not necessarily a vision board, but vision. Like what is the vision for my life? What is the vision for my family? What is the vision for the, for the generations? What is the vision for my children? And what does that require of me? And we were at church and they were talking to couples. It was a couple seminar. And my pastor said, if you know the vision, then you know the price to pay. So for example, on a flight, there's economy, then there's business, then there's first class. And if you know that you're going for economy, you're going to just get chicken or beef, right? And you pay the economy price. If you go to business, you know that you get an a la carte menu and you get some leg room and all sorts of things. And the price is higher. And if you go to first class, okay, it's all the bells and whistles, but the price is times I don't know how much. So when you know the vision, you understand what it will cost to get there. So when the challenges come and the circumstances come, you say, of course I have a price to pay, a high price to, play, to pay because the vision is so big. So you end up almost welcoming challenges. Like you're like, okay, this is stretching me. This is growing me. This is good for my character. I don't enjoy it. It hurts. It sucks. I wish I could take it away. But I know that the vision is so clear that nothing can stop me. And like I said, not all of us have to be on first class. Not all of us have to be in business not all and some of us have to be in economy you have to choose the price you're willing to pay for the life that you want to live okay how would you advise someone wanting to start their own podcast um by the way i have to mention next year we are working on a podcast course um it's going to be an evergreen course um so because i know a lot of people want to get in the podcasting space and i think there is so much room and so many opportunities i know for a fact spotify africa is doing so much work they're doing so much groundwork in africa to create opportunities for the next year so I encourage you to start on a podcast. One, um, I think have a niche. Understand what you're going to talk about, what your podcast is about. Disclaimer, not all podcasts have to be interviews. I know a lot of people ask me, how do I get people to come and interview? You don't. We don't all have to be interviewers. If that's the goal, then go for it. But you could literally have a podcast by yourself or with a friend. So identify the type of podcast you want to have. Um, understand your niche and then start with the sound. Other people use their phones and then you graduate to microphones and, and start investing in your podcast. And your podcast doesn't have to be video. It can literally be audio. So, but first things first, understand your niche, find other podcasts that are alike and check what they are doing. But like I said, we will, we are working on an in-depth course on uh, podcasts so that there can be some sort of support. How to solidify one's relationship with God, um, it, it goes back to that habits thing. Um, it's like, think of when you're dating someone. What makes the relationship nice is that every day you're communicating with that person. On Twitter, there's always that conversation or that question of... Um, if you're dating someone, do you expect them to call you every day? Of course I expect you to call me every day because how else am I supposed to get to know you or enjoy your company? So it's the same, same thing with God. In order to know the nature of God and to fall in love with God and to appreciate the relationship, you just have to spend time with him. And it's cultivating that relationship in different ways. Our relationship with God looks so different, but it's important to cultivate an individual relationship with God. Hi, how do you keep sticking to your boundaries? For me, boundaries are very, very important. Um, they show respect to myself and respect to the other person. So if I constantly allow others to cross my boundaries after they have been clearly communicated, one, it means I don't respect myself. And two, I don't respect the other, like I just have no respect whatsoever. And respect, I hold respect very high. Um, it's like number one for me. So yeah, boundaries are there to protect everyone, man. If I don't have and boundaries are not out of I hate you or out of I don't want anyone in my space. Boundaries are that I need this boundary, this protection in my life so that I can be the best person for you. And if someone can't accept that boundary, it means maybe they're not your person or maybe they need to go deal with their own boundaries. But if there's no boundaries, like think of boundaries as a not a wall, but a fence. Like a fence is not there to just keep everything out for the rest of the, your life, but you open the gate when necessary for the car to come in and then you close the gate so that it can protect the house. But if you just leave your house fenceless in a dangerous community, people are going to just come in and go and take what they want and leave what they want and mess up the house. And 
they just do what they want. But if there's a boundary, a fence, it's like you're careful on who you let into your home. Like we're so careful on who we let into our houses. Um, we're careful on who we give our phones to. You don't just give your phone to anybody. But when it comes to our hearts and our lives, that's where we want to say, okay, come on, everybody, drop off your stuff. No. We need to respect ourselves and respect other people. And when you're respecting of your own boundaries, you respect other people's boundaries. And I think then relationships are healthier. But if the other party can't respect boundaries, it's not going to work. Is it okay to go back to a job or partner when it's not working on the other side? Um, it's never okay to go back to something just because something else is not working. That is using other people and using things. And when you get in that environment, you're not the best you. You're just there because you're closing a void or you're trying to keep busy. And it's not fulfilling for anyone. It's not helpful for you. It's not helpful for the other person. Um, I don't know what context you're speaking in, but um, if you go back to a person, it happens, people break up or they stop things, make sure that your intentions are clear and you know exactly why and you're aware of what made you leave that place because the same thing that made you leave is possibly the same thing that's going to make you leave again. And at the end of the day, you take you everywhere. You take you to that job, you take you to that relationship, you take you to that environment. So if you're the common thing in every environment, I think it's important to do the work so that whatever space you get into, um, you bring a new you, one who sees better, who's got better perspective and who can actually make a good use of the environment. Otherwise, you'll be chopping and changing environments. But the problem is not the environment or the people. The problem is you. One of the things I enjoy that drive me crazy about your podcast is the people you choose. How do you choose the people that come into your podcast? Um, for me, it's always important to have an intention for the podcast. It's what am I hoping? What is the takeaway message? So with every podcast, I'm very deliberate about what I hope people take at the end of every conversation. So in choosing the people, it's have they lived enough to tell a story um, from a perspective of this is what I learned or is it from a perspective? Perspective of I'm still hurting and it's, it's, it's almost like it comes from a bitter place because while we're still hurting we can't necessarily um, teach effectively because we're still bleeding right and also what I found that is a lot of people are looking to inspire so it's like oh okay um, what's the goal oh I just want to inspire people for me, that comes off as a bit of a red flag because it, it, it's like you're t you've taken a position of, I'm the one who's figured it out, so I'm going to inspire everybody else. But if someone naturally has a vulnerable story to share that they know could help other people, that's my kind of person. But like I said, first things first is that I'm very clear about what I'm hoping to achieve in a podcast. If my hope is to achieve people learning about money, then I look for a person who I think is best suited to talk to my people about money. If the podcast is about starting that business or getting your dream going or just a feel good story or we just want to laugh, like it doesn't matter what the vision is, but it has to be clear um, when I choose my my guests. And also I don't choose alone. We have a team where we we talk about it. Is it fitting for the, for the podcast? Is it fitting for people? Because I'm not doing the podcast for me. I can go and listen to those people on other platforms, but if I'm bringing them, I'm considerate of all the people who consume um, the podcast. How do you manage your business finances? Got an accountant or it's DIY? Um, it was DIY. I had a little bit of knowledge on finances and I could make decisions, but now my business is growing and I am looking to step away from just that key man risk thing. And so I do have an accountant. I do have a financial advisor. So, but it's, it's very gradual in getting the right people in place to, um, but I've always had an accountant. An accountant, it's important because how else, unless you know how to do your own taxes, which, whew, child. Um, but yeah, I think gradually with my business, now I'm getting more an always on um, bookkeeper who takes care of my books. So yeah, it's important. Otherwise, your business cannot grow. Our businesses cannot grow if we don't manage, we, if we don't lock in the financial aspect. Because you could be making all the money, but if you don't know where it's going, it's what's the point. What's your style inspo? My style inspo, honestly, I, I'm i not rigid like that. If I like something, I like it. If I don't, I don't. But I genuinely love... Um, 
um, Roz, Roz the creative stylist. I love her her style. Um, and then I go on Pinterest a lot. I'm stylist Jay Bolin. I love um, what he's doing um, with all the ladies he dresses. So I love his um, page as well. But honestly, this I go to the shop and I buy what I like and I mix it up. But there's no like I'm not like a fashion girl. I wouldn't consider myself a fashion girl. How do you shut the no outside noise out? How do you get yourself in that focus zone? Um, by clarifying the vision. I wrote the other day that don't undermine the power of a clear and simple vision. If the vision is to drive to engine garage, it's clear. I know that if my child comes and runs to me, it's like, hey, baby, I know this is what you want to do. You want to play. But the goal is to drive to engine garage. And I take my car and I go to engine garage. And so you can apply that to life. If the goal is clear, no matter what is thrown at you, you know exactly where you're trying to go, who you need to go there, or who you need in order to get there um, and everything else. What is life teaching you currently? Life is teaching me to not be afraid to shed. Um, for me, this has been shedding, shedding season, um, healing season, and healing comes with shedding and letting go of things, people, systems, ideas that were good for you in one season, but are no longer good for me in this season. And it's been a painful process. But on the other side, it's been magical. Like I think in the parts that I've shared and I've accepted, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. God, I wish you showed me this before you took this away. So life is teaching me that it's okay to share it and you should welcome it. Mourn it, grieve it, um, but ultimately it has to happen. You're such a positive person and it's beautiful to watch. How do you get that positive outlook on life? I think it's a constant work. It is an everyday work. Um, sometimes I wake up and I can literally feel like an anxiety gripping me, but I know that in my day I have to have a moment of gratitude and that like shifts my perspective completely. I know that I could be sitting at my desk stressing about something and you think you don't have time, but five minutes to go jump on the trampoline with my children like opens up my mind so much. I do daily walks outside. Um, a five kilometer walk is the best thing I've ever done um, every single day. So I'll literally go to gym in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, but I make sure that I get in a walk. Sometimes it's not 5K, sometimes it's 1K. But to just walk in nature and put my headphones on, sometimes not listening to anything and sometimes listening to a sermon or some good music and to just clear my mind. Like I look at nature and I realized hmm, I'm such a I'm such a small but a big part of of life that this issue right now it seems like the biggest thing but it really really isn't and and so that encourages me um, a whole lot and what else makes me keep it positive and also you can either choose to be positive or negative either way life is going to be, to happen so you can't stop life from happening and you can be grumpy all the time and blame the world and blame everybody and rightfully so people contribute to government and all of that everybody contributes and you can either take the position of blaming and complaining and feeling like life is unfair and you're justified in doing that but you'll be miserable or you can choose to take responsibility for how you feel take responsibility for how you respond take responsibility for how you react and take responsibility for how for your picture of life um so yeah I think it's about taking responsibility that there's certain things you just can't control like, I can't control my husband. I can't control my family. I can't control my business. I can't control my clients. I can't control my children. Look, there's very little that we can control. What I can control is my reaction. And I'm not saying that have a false positivity where, like, you just, something could be happening. You're like, I choose to be positive. No, it's okay to feel and be angry. But the problem is once you stay there and make it your way of life. So I encourage all feelings, all feelings are necessary, but um, how you treat life afterwards or how you come back from that is very important and it is really a choice. So I choose that and it's not that I'm jumping up and down every day. I have bad days, but in my platforms, there's no reason to add more negativity and I'm really good. I mean, really, really good. Like you can see even in these questions, there's a lot of questions that are just offensive and not kind. And if I focus on those, what good does it do?
then I all just gather around people so we can be negative. But I can focus on the good one because 90% of the questions are good. You just have to choose your outlook. Um, so yeah, that is today's conversation or questions answered. I hope um, they served you well. Uh, we were supposed to have Mama in, but then Mama in and I chose to go. We chose to do Cape Town and have a good time. So we didn't record a podcast. Um, but yeah, this was, this was great. Thank you for the questions. I'm looking forward to Speak Life September. It's going to be amazing. The healing edition, very vulnerable for me. Uh, but God has done such a good work. And I have to share it with everybody who's part of. And yeah, and also join our Sunday Nuggets. They're free. They are fun. The feedback is amazing. Keep following the podcast. Um, it's going to be a good month in August. It's Women's Month. Um, yeah. Till then, thank you so much for listening. I'm Pumila Dwava and happy Wisdom and Wellness Wednesday.